are planning to invest in stocks on Wall Street, don't bother, because the system is rigged. At least that's what author Michael Lewis said, essentially, in an explosive interview on 60 Minutes this past Sunday, which made stockbrokers up and down Wall Street cringe. Lewis told Steve Croft that high-frequency traders, with a little help from the U.S. stock exchanges and the big banksters, have rigged the markets in their own favor while screwing other investors. Take a look. What's the advantage of speed? I'll give you an example. If I'm a, I, I just an ordinary trader at, at a bank uh, or an investor in Manhattan, and I, I'm trying to go buy stock, and I hit a button. It says uh, I'm going to buy 10,000 shares of Microsoft that seem to be out there. Um, my s trade signal goes uh, like up the West Side Highway, out the Lincoln Tunnel, and it arrives first at an exchange on the other side of the Lincoln Tunnel called the Bats Exchange. Um, there are waiting high-frequency traders who have algorithms that are able to determine what it is I want to do. They then need to beat me to the other exchanges to buy the Microsoft I want to buy and sell it back to me at a higher price. And they're doing that? They're doing that. But they not only need to beat me, they need to beat each other. Uh, While Lewis's allegations are explosive, they're not entirely new. High frequency trading has been on the rise for the past several years, causing our government to grow increasingly concerned. The FBI's New York office is looking into high frequency trading firms, while New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman has also launched an investigation into this questionable practice. So if high frequency traders have a competitive advantage over the rest of the players in the field, shouldn't we at least be implementing a financial transaction tax on their trades? so that high-frequency trading can't be such a profitable and game-rigging practice. Joining me now for more on that is Richard Eska, senior fellow at the Campaign for America's Future. Rich, Richard, welcome back. It's always good to speak with you, Tom. Thank you, Richard. It's great having you on. How, how, what exactly is high-frequency trading? How does it work? Well, first of all, enormous number of stock transactions are performed electronically, including the little guy that Michael Lewis talks about, you know, plug some numbers into a computer that goes to an automated broker. That's anything automated is considered high frequency trading. But we also have the sort of related practice of algorithmic trading, where computers are just primed to look for signals at different points in the system and then flip massive amounts of stocks in response to the signals, things like what stocks are rising up and down, what names are being mentioned in news stories. The famous account uh, going back a few years was when Anne Hathaway was picked to host the Oscars. Hathaway stocks jumped through the roof because of algorithmic trading. So it really covers mm. both that kind of trading and then just the kind that the little guy does sitting at his computer or the big orders that are placed by the big houses. So with specific to high frequency trading though, um, how do these guys gain an advantage over other investors, whether they're large institutional investors who may not be physically next door to a, to a, to a stock exchange or even smaller investors around the country? Well, I think that's something, frankly, that needs more investigation than, than this book gives us. I mean, I think what Michael Lewis is talking about are, are incidents that took place in 2007 to maybe 2009. I think we need to look at the whole process of high-frequency trading and how well that serves us. What you have now are, are big houses and big guys using algorithms to buy and sell massive amounts of stocks, flip them back and forth. You know, this is not what a stock market was supposed to be. The idea was that the wisdom of the various investors would get involved and decide which company was worth backing and which company was shaky. And that, you know, that's the whole philosophical foundation of the stock market. Instead, you have computers basically watching each other and reacting in a split second. That, frankly, concerns me even more, the foundational issues here, than what Michael Lewis is talking about. Right. So we're no longer investing in Apple because it's a good company. We're investing. Well, actually, it's not even. My my understanding is that as much as seventy percent of all the activity on the on the New York Stock Exchange on any given day isn't even human beings. It's not you and me. It's some computer going. Okay, we're going to sell a million dollars worth of this, and when it goes up a sixteenth of a cent, we'll we'll sell it. And then when it goes down a quarter of a cent, we'll buy it. And then when it goes and and just in those little tiny margins, at the end of the day, they've made millions of dollars. Am, am I accurately describing that? 
Oh, that's absolutely right. Sure. And I think that, you know, one of the risks is you have something like the flash crash we saw a few years back when there was a plunge, you know, based on uh, a misunderstood transaction or a mistake at a keyboard. But uh, you have the issue of what they call latency, which is what Michael Lewis is writing about. But you basically have the issue of a market that's gone out of control. It's trading at enormous volumes in this automated way, which is why to answer your opening question, Yes, we need a financial transaction tax, both for the revenue, but even more importantly, perhaps, to slow down this kind of automated mass gambling and mass speculation and mass reactivity that we're seeing now well, taking over the market. From, you know, I, there, there was one prior to the 30s, uh, I, I think Teddy Roosevelt started it, or maybe it was even before that, to, to help pay for the uh, Spanish-American War, but then that had been dropped, and then in 33, I believe it was, or 34, when when uh, Franklin Roosevelt started the Securities and Exchange Commission, he started this securities transaction excise tax, the step tax, to pay for it. And it was a small percentage, a, a, a quarter of a percent, as I recall, of, or a quarter of one percent, uh, on, of a tax on each trade. Now, because that's a larger amount than the amounts of money that some of these high-frequency trades are making with every one of these transactions, would that throw enough sand in the gears to make this, to just basically blow up this business model and take the stock market back to investing for investment purposes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if we set a tax at the kinds of levels we're talking about, they would be unnoticeable to most everyday investors, most people who are buying and selling stocks. But these mass transactions would be slowed down. It would create a kind of friction that would get the market closer to the kind of thing that I think philosophically and economically we want to see that's working to everyone's benefit. And not only that, it would generate hundreds of millions of dollars. It could be used to regulate the stock market.